Lidditz Podcast Co-op presents Wadfam Chalk Pod. Hello and welcome to the Wadfam Chalk Pod. I'm Dylan Weaver. And I'm Andrew Sabo. And this week we are joined by a special guest who you have heard on the show before. He's our Bible expert. And the love of my life, Drew Huber. Uh, that's silly. I am. <laughs> I would like to quantify, qualify that I am not a Bible expert. I said our Bible uh, your expert, Bible expert. Drew. Sure. You sure. are the closest thing we've had on the show to a Bible expert. Which, <laughs> which is funny because Andrew has, what, like a year less Bible educational experience than I do? Okay, you're He's in seminary. He's going for counseling. <laughs> he went for precept. That's true. I yeah, hope that's, you got more out of no, it that than fair. he did. Yes, certainly. <laughs> We're also in much seminary more now. Out of it yes. For what it's worth, we did have Arthur Woods on, who also graduated from Bible college and pastored, youth pastored a church. So And I mean, has a master's degree. Like, right. has completed yes. his master's degree. Yes, so... so. You know, are we not he, disclosing that Arthur was our youth, youth, <laughs> our youth We've pastor? We've talked about it before. Well, on the episode that he was on, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. but um, but yeah. So I, I guess I guess we need to have like a Bible throwdown between you no, and Arthur see, to decide feel, who's doesn't feel good. Who, who's number one on the pod? <laughs> He'll pull in his dad, and then we'll get three L, uh, three generations of LBC students. <laughs> oh, please help me. So yeah, as as per usual, Drew's on the podcast to talk about a Bible episode. In this instance, it's episode 477, OT Action News, Battle at the Kishan. I don't know why I pronounced it like that, but we're going with it, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm Fair here. enough. Not, yeah. Put I'm all the emphasis on the Sean part. Mm, a lot of Sean. <laughs> so many Seans. <laughs> uh, so, so in the past, Drew, you've always been on for a Bernard Mm-hmm. and episode yes. also you're our first guest to hit four episodes really congratulations yep. wow thank you i'm yeah. truly honored so uh so yeah what, what 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 drew you to this one well i was told not to do another bernard episode so that was <laughs> that was a good we mutually good decided no, at the yes, end of the last I, yes, one we decided that, that, that we might wanted be to fraught. mix it up yeah we, we thought we'd give it an, uh, a shot with something else <laughs> I was not. I was not forced under uh, duress. Um, but looking at some of the other options, the OT Action News was was certainly something that was interesting. It seemed like a very different sort of vibe or way of getting at telling a Bible story than Bernard and Job, um, or Bernard and uh, we also did Joseph. Man, like in the Jays. But mm-hmm. there's also Bernard and Jeremiah. Maybe we'll do that someday. <laughs> someday. Um, Is that a three parter? It's a seventeen. It's a uh, no, seventeen. <laughs> the full album of Bernard <laughs> reading. Oh, that'd be brutal. It's just him just reading through the whole yeah, book. Yeah, of yeah. Jeremiah. I was gonna say Job's a longer book, though. Yes, it is. True, um, true, and that would be even more boring to listen to Bernard. That'd be, that'd be pretty brutal. Just him reading through the entirety of Job. I mean, it's mostly <laughs> prayers and just him stumbling over and constantly stopping and questioning why they're so sad. Look, here's my new pitch. Bernard reads all of Song of Solomon for Ooh. children. Yes, yes. <laughs> Bernard and Song of Solomon. <laughs> you know, I would not be surprised if Focus did take a, you know, a Song of Solomon, but I feel like they'd probably pick Wooten for it. If, if, <laughs> if we're going, you know, post-album 50. Oh, my word. All right. Anyways, you were, were saying why you chose sure this. Any Song of Solomon. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I chose it. I like... I like Old Testament things. I think they're really interesting um, and and often overlooked in today's sort of church society. Um, and with that, uh, you know, Judges is, is a cool book. And so I, I figured we'd give it a shot. I mean, that was really, <laughs> Judges is a, really is most of my thinking through it. Book. <laughs> Judges yeah, is a no, very totally interesting fair. book. It doesn't have to be anything incredibly. Yeah. yeah. No, I did not feel, Deep. you know, the hand of God guiding me to this particular episode. All right. Well, then you're going to have to leave. All of the episodes we've chosen up till this point were directly inspired by. Oh, crap. All right. Well, yeah. I guess I'll see you guys later. Yep. I mean, it's on you. Know, Andrew usually was... gets his episodes in dreams. Sure. I'm sure. more of a, you know, pray it out mm-hmm. kind mm-hmm. of guy here. But but yeah, Man, these, we have these... some some wild perspectives on Pentecost in this room. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Okay. Well, 
I don't believe that. Would just like to clarify. <laughs> Good job, lady. The views of Andrew Saber do not reflect the views of Andrew Saber. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Precisely. Oh. So yeah, this is uh, this is an interesting episode. It's uh, it's so there are four OT Action News episodes throughout the run of Odyssey. This is the final of those four. Not okay. that they tie into each other at all, but you know. As far as that format, which this is a great note from the official guide, but the uh, this this OT action news format was inspired by the uh, embedded reports during the Persian Gulf War. Hmm. So they were watching or watching TV, watching the news in 90 and 91. And we're like, what if this but Bible? <laughs> That's Breaking See, that explains news. a lot. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. I have, well, yeah, we'll talk about some of my notes on this episode, but that sort of inspiration really, um, it carries through. Yeah, I see it. I see it very mm-hmm. clearly. I'm getting, getting notes of cable news. <laughs> right. The, uh, the episode, uh, has an interesting origin. So it was initially written by Nathan Hubler, who we've talked about a lot and are big fans of, along with two friends as a spec script um and then when he got hired on as a freelance writer um he and paul mccusker worked this into his like into a proper episode Hmm. so both hubler and mccusker are credited on the script um and it was the final of hubler's freelance scripts before he came on as a staff writer Hmm. that's so interesting i i I mean, so Dylan, this is the, the question for you. During your re-listens of the Novacom saga, which yep. counter moves is mostly, uh, did you listen right. to this one as well? No. no, we are different people. I <laughs> I was very much a like I skipped a lot of episodes on albums Mm -hmm. just because they did not look interesting or i listened to them once and was like eh whatever like i would listen to this Mm -hmm. one today with pretty fresh ears Mm -hmm. interesting Um, yeah wow so i did so i definitely have the deepest connection (laughs) (laughs) i have heard this episode like when i yeah when i found out that this was what we were covering i was like oh this is gonna be great this is right in my bag yeah well and what andrew's alluding to there is that it's on the uh counter moves album it's episode mm-hmm. three on that which is smack in the middle of the big old novacom arc we covered when we when we started the show yeah um, i think it's right after grand opening it's on the same it was on the same disc as grand opening part one and then part two and then this is the third i'm gonna fact check you live please, on air please do that i think i might be right <laughs> I think I might if you like are, it. nobody will care, and if you aren't, everyone, everyone will care. <laughs> it is not. Oh, oh I care uh, now. Oh. <laughs> you, you, so suck. It, you suck. Shining man. Armor parts one and two are what start this mm-hmm. this uh, this album. Then it's OT Action News. Okay, and Shining Armor. That's Jason in. I think, mm, like Nicaragua, someplace in Central America. Yes, correct. We didn't cover it as part of Novacom, but it's tangentially related. Yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> all of that context for people who aren't Drew, because yep. uh, yeah, that none of the words we said meant anything to you, did they? <laughs> I understood some of. I mean, I listened to some of you know Adventures in Odyssey as a kid. I yeah, I understand some of what you're saying. Yeah. You just didn't listen to it enough to start a podcast about it. Yeah, I just listened to it enough to be on a podcast about it. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, for what it's worth, can be none at all. Shout out to guests who have had, not had Odyssey experience and have killed it. Yeah. And all right. not shout out to guests who have had a little bit of Odyssey experience and didn't. <laughs> oh, me. It's fine. Gulp. Yes, Drew, your episodes are notoriously derided in our fan base. Yeah. And I will say it does feel right to do a podcast about this episode like report on the episode of reporting like it feels good sitting in a room with a bunch of mics you know yeah. going yeah. over news well about news. and this is this about is our news. problem is this episode does not have an adventures and odyssey intro 
it just does the OT Action News thing. And so I don't know how to start our episode because we (laughs) always do the intros that they provide. Uh, Bad Cold Open? I mean, it might just be... It might just be... Like, we might just be starting on Hello and Welcome to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And if we did, how was it? Tweet at (laughs) us. (laughs) Um, So, Drew... Do you want to just give us a brief summary of the Bible story that this episode is covering? Sure. So, I mean, this is Judges 4 and 5, uh, which is the story of Deborah and Barak. So this would be um, the third uh, cycle of Judges where, you know, Israel does bad stuff and then, you know, they have a judge raised up to free them from the oppressors that they've been put under and... All that good jazz. We'll talk about that a little bit later uh, when Wit brings it up, too. Um, but this story in general is Deborah's the judge and calls for Barack to lead an army against... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Drew. It's it's uh, it's Bayrak? Oh, sorry. Yes, I Bayrak. Don't... Bayrak. <laughs> My God. Dude, I don't even know how to pronounce his name. I... In all of like, I looked up other names because I wanted to say it right, but I clearly did a bad job. Oh, nobody um, knows. I'm just making Barack, fun of it because they Bayrak. say Bayrak. Uh, whichever one I say throughout the episode, you know I'm talking. The big B. <laughs> the big um, B. Nah, the big I don't B think upstairs. I can call him that. The big uh, B upstairs. Uh, the B they the racked Barack, <laughs> either or, uh, is called by Deborah to lead an army against the Canaanites and specifically, um, uh, what's his name? Cicera. There we go. Jeez. Oh, oh yes. Uh, yes, General Cicera. Um, so they, they go and fight him and kill him and all of his men. Well, they don't really kill him, but yeah, again, yeah. we'll get into that. But the general mm-hmm. story is this this judge calls a guy to get an army together and and fight the Canaanites to free them from oppression. Very nice. The uh yeah, ju- the, kind of the whole judge's period is more or less a blind spot for me. I'm like I know some of the bigger stories and I've read through it, but none of that has stuck. And so it was a fun thing where, like, Andrew obviously has listened to this episode a bunch. Mm -hmm. And, Drew, I assume you knew the story somewhat well going into it. Yeah. So, for me, I I got to maybe experience it with the least amount of context (laughs) and enjoy the... Like, we start out with... Uh, a Mandy show called Good Housekeeping throughout history mm, with so good. <laughs> with Delight. JL, which is really fun. And also, I am listening, not knowing that this is going to tie into the rest of the story. Yeah. No, I actually, I have my first note on this whole thing is that it was very cool how they like split it up. Like into these two separate stories, and then end up kind of like interweaving them together. Yeah, it is a well-written episode. Yes, so I, well written. Yeah, one of my, I mean, ultimate takeaways, which I'm sure we'll talk about again later, is that I appreciated this so much more than Bernard and Joe <laughs> in a way that I can't even quantify because it's less like Bernard and Joe felt like they were trying to portray what they were saying as scripture. Like mm-hmm. there were enough things that were direct quotes from scripture that without very clear you know having a bible open in front of you like some of the things that they said could be understood as that's what the bible says when it wasn't um they were added extra pieces which may or may not change your takeaways from that for sure whereas this one even though there were pieces that weren't straight from the text the fact that they're children you know reporting on at least i assume they're children they're children they're children yes for the most part children reporting on you know war uh other than that <laughs> in you know, the war <laughs> i was i was okay with some of the or i was more okay with some of the the artistic choices they made because it didn't feel like someone you know basically made their own translation of the bible and added crap right so. it, it is it is less of a direct adaptation and more in the spirit of yeah Mm -hmm. like which it it gets it it has a little bit more artistic freedom in a way that i think is really good and interesting and fun and i think is probably where this should stick i mean (laughs) yeah this is why i pitched it to you when we were kind of yeah 
I think I think our I think our text exchange when you were looking at episodes, you, you had selected this one and maybe like an Imagination Station one or something. And I was like, I think OT Action News is going to be less scriptural, but in a way that you like more. Yeah, definitely. This was this was very enjoyable, even just like as a listening. Like I would listen to this if I had kids and would be like fine with them listening to this and wouldn't be like. Yeah, no, we're just, if we're going to do this, we're just going to like throw the Bible app on and have mm-hmm. it like read through. Like that's yeah. where I am with Job and, and even <laughs> Joseph. Like at this point, we're just going to throw on the Bible app and we're just going to have it read to me. Like mm-hmm. yeah. I, there's no point right. in listening to this Bernard episode because they didn't even have good takeaways. Right. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Um, anyway. <laughs> uh, no, but certainly. And I think that that is a line that Odyssey walks sometimes better than others but i agree that this ot action news format is incredibly compelling in a way that imagination station adventures historically they have been but it's a little bit more different because it's bound to the narrative of a story in a different way um whereas like the kids that are reporting on the event presumably kids radio whatever it's it's local television i this is a kids radio show yeah so it is an audio it's a show within a show Mm -hmm. so this is kids in the town of odyssey playing kids reporting on events in the old testament Mm -hmm. yeah and other the the weird thing that they always that they that they always kind of sort of I don't know is always a little bit awkward is like the people playing like Deborah and Barack and uh, uh, Cicera like are not necessarily other voices within the town of Odyssey so it becomes a little more obscured where you're like the kids are playing themselves in this like fake news yeah. report but. A lot of the characters are not. On the opposite end, JL is played by Katie Lee, who is Connie, and she is not masking the Connie of it all. Yes. Somewhat intentionally. Like, you can tell that, oh, this is like, they pulled Connie in to play Mm. this part, not this is Katie Lee playing JL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is cool and and fun. Like, I think that what they do with Connie and JL... uh, it, well, I mean, just the character of JL is really cool in the story. So, yeah, as we previously mentioned, I think it's really cool how they tied it all together. Yep. Uh, so so that intro between, um, yeah, Mandy's just talking to, to JL about all the, it's about her tent and how she, you know, makes it with these stakes so that it's, mm-hmm. you know, you got to be really strong to put in these stakes. That's what makes it such good a good... Good hammer and good stake, baby. <laughs> and to me, I'm like, huh, I'm just going to put that in the back of my mind. I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> Weird call out, huh? <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, whatever. She, she, she Made her own tent. With, There's yeah. about three components to a tent. Which... <laughs> yeah. So we got we to gotta draw attention to, to one of them. And uh, yes, I... And then we uh, we go we get interrupted. That broadcast gets interrupted by breaking news mm-hmm. from Brink Chetley. Okay, it is uh, Brink Chetley. I, love I wasn't yes. sure what his name was. I couldn't tell if it was Brink Chetley. Brink Chetley. It is. It's a riff on, um, what is it? Chet Chet Huntley and David Brinkley were NBC anchors, so they did Brink Chetley. Wow, <laughs> that's good. You I'm '90s sorry. kids will remember. <laughs> Brink Chetley. <laughs> what a name! Love Brink Chetley. His first name is Brink. I, <laughs> I would also like to call out that they they were um, anchors from 1956 until 1970. All right, so, so you was- 1950s kids will remember. <laughs> So wow. a reference that the parents of the kids listening to this in 2001 probably didn't get. Yep. Yeah. Fair. It's for when you're with your grandparents. <laughs> wow. Yep. Huh. Uh, I love I love that degree of obfuscation. That is good. I will also, just before we move on too far from oh, yeah, uh, yeah. JL, it is interesting how JL, like, super doesn't like her husband or, like, the Canaanites. Like, mm-hmm. I mean... 
you know, not mention the Bible at all. Just right. throwing that out there. In fact, the yeah. Bible says they're kind of like chill with the Canaanites. Cool. Um, weird that that's like such a <laughs> distinct aspect of this. Like, oh, my husband don't really like him either. <laughs> like, like yeah. what? Where did this even come from? <laughs> Who came up with this? I mean, it's just like TV writing at that point. Yeah, sure. Like, it's yeah, just yeah. like, oh, we've got, like, you know, a broad, and she doesn't like your husband. Like, that's, I mean, that's that's the vibe they're yeah. trying to give yeah. her. No, I get it. It just... Yeah, it is no, funny. We gotta and set it, it up that sense. she's willing to kill someone. Yeah, because <laughs> she doesn't like her husband. We've got a we stupid s- Canaanites. We've gotta soften the blow of this horrific story from Judges. <laughs> <laughs> Which is such... Why'd they pick... This, well, yeah, we'll get it. Never mind. I mean, Judges I, is full of like really, you know, high action stories and yeah. whatever, but it's also like within the spectrum of Israel's history, not a good time. <laughs> no, rather dark, rather bloody and yeah. gross. It'd be like and if not somebody, like a child story. <laughs> yeah, it'd be yeah. like if somebody made a, like a documentary about like homeless people fighting over food scraps during the Great Depression. Like, it's like, okay, I get it. It's a part of American history, but, like, this is really, this is the part? I mean, you mean Squid Game? (laughs) Yeah, Squid Game. (laughs) But Uh. the, the thing I think, like, the thing I appreciate, though, is that, they decided to adapt this piece of text. Oh, yeah. For children. Like, it is both, like, a why did they do this and also, like, cool that they did this because the reason i'm not hyper familiar with this passage is because there wasn't a veggie tales about it Mm -hmm. and because it didn't you know we didn't you know get details about deborah i don't i can't imagine not 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 not, not when i was around veggie not not with so much emphasis on tent pegs (laughs) but like but like it's not it's not the kind of story that you tell with a felt board like it Although I, I mean, sign me up. I Fla- think I've seen. I called it a felt board. It's a flannel graph. I'm so sorry, people. What? I, I might forgive you. Are you talking about the 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 little felt shapes that get moved on the? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's what that's it's called. A, a it's a flannel graph. Wow. What a great word. Yeah. I can't believe I you forgot it, Dylan. I, I know. I know. I go on my face. So it looks like there is at least a silly song with Larry about that Deborah. mentions Deborah. Okay. At, at least. At least. I. I wasn't willing to pay five dollars to get past the paywall to see about the rest of the rest of this. Uh, re- regardless. regardless, yes, I, you like, make a good point. I it is like cool that the they... underrepresented Bible stories. Well, and I, yeah, underrepresented, underrepresent, underrepresented, underrepresented. That's how you say that word. Thank you. It's fine. It's My, good. But like, I, need to I think that is podcasts. part of what the OT Action News format allows them to do sure. is to take take stories that are particularly brief and less covered. Yeah. Um. Because yeah, the other ones like they have they have one on Jeff Thath, mm-hmm. a name are they that I will all never. Uh, uh. No, because there's also uh uh. The first one is Abraham Lot and Sodom. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> love to cover that one with you someday, Drew. That'd um, be interesting. And the second one is Jericho. Okay. And interesting. Then, and then Japheth and... Yep. And this one. Yeah. I remember the On Solid Ground one, and I... Uh, what I can say is the part of that episode that is seared into my brain is the sound that Lot makes when she turns around. <laughs> so I anxiously await talking right. about that. With us. You want to hear people turn into salt? Yes. No, I don't. <laughs> Take a it's pass. not a good time. Oh. But that makes the best podcast. Yeah. Mm. All right. So... So then we've got uh, Al- uh, Brink cuts over to Alex Jefferson, mm-hmm. who is covering stuff on the ground. Mm-hmm. And this is where I was like, boy, I know nothing about Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> this is quality. Uh, oh, Deborah's great. I mean, she was one of the good judges. She was a good judge. She was not a bad judge, yes. Uh, I, and those are the only two qualifiers in the book there of judges. Are, there are good judges and there are <laughs> bad, bad judges. judges. No, I... I like this. I I thought that it was it was pretty 
it was a pretty good adaptation of that at least specific passage. My, I mean, my biggest issue is the one I'm sure that you all are dying to talk about, which is the weird flex on women that they do. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. oh yes, like, I, that is the only thing I have notes on. Because <laughs> I mean, not quite, but like it, close yeah. to it. it yeah, because there's no that isn't in there. It's not in the Bible. <laughs> like I mean, so they talk about a woman will kill Sisera, mm-hmm. but it's not like a flex, and it's not like because of that. Like it's not a punishment to him, and he's not torn up about it. He never once says anything about it, and in the audio, he's like. Wait, what, dude? A, a girl's gonna do it, dude? <laughs> what? And then, like, Alex goes up to Deborah and is like, what'd you say about a girl? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, isn't that a little weird? And she was like, I don't know. <laughs> he goes like, and and he goes like, you're gonna be that woman. Like, you're going into battle. You're gonna be that woman. And he's like, a woman going into battle this day and age? Yeah, like, wait, you're not... <laughs> This day and age, you are eight. <laughs> my guy, you, you don't even been... know what a day and age is, dude. <laughs> oh, no, you got to hit a decade mark before you're talking about day and age, my friend. <laughs> I will say Deborah's comment about like God's will being done with or without her felt right. Like that mm-hmm. felt like a good mm-hmm. Deborah judge answer. Mm-hmm. But then, like, man, they don't leave the fact that a woman's gonna kill Cicera alone. Like, that's, like, a key theme. Well, But then they I, never resolve it. Well, the thing I, is, so, is that he... So, because... What's the other guy's name? The General Bar- Barak. Because Barak was, didn't, wasn't faithful to God in, you know, going down right away or whatever in victory, and because he went to Deborah... They're pitching it as his lack of faith is the reason that this woman, a lesser, air quote, lesser, you know, member of society is going to defeat, you know, Cicero. Right. It's the, like, God's will will be done with or without you. Yeah. So he had... With he... or without you. Oh. Right, ten seconds or less, Andrew. No copyright. <laughs> that um, less than ten seconds. We're good. <laughs> I, the, the story portrayed it as, like, so he... He initially asked for Deborah to come with him. That was that was the only thing. So like she she gathered him and said, "Hey, you got to go down and do this." And he was like, "You're gonna come with me, right?" And she's like, "Yes," but because of that, now it's gonna be a woman that kills him, and you're not gonna get any glory for it. So suck it. Yeah, that's I... that's what happens on the audio, um, and that's like. The whole exchange is is so much less than that in the Bible. Like it's not. Would you care to read? I would. I would love to read. So Brock said to her, "If you go with me, I will go. If you will not go with me, I will not go." And she said, "I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman." Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Barak called out Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh, and blah 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 blah. Like that's it. Like yeah. it's not. It's not a punishment. It's not a. Like, uh, well, I mean, the, the, the fact that, like, he won't get any glory mm-hmm. is, I mean, that's in the text. You just I mean, read yeah, that. it says that he's not going to get any glory, but it doesn't feel like that's a... A punitive thing. Yeah, like, that, at least to me, that didn't feel like because you've asked me to go with you, now it's punitive. I feel like that's just the nature of how this was going to go down okay. anyway. At least that's... I mean, that's yeah, my yeah. reading of it. I Certainly, mean, there is I'm, Obviously, my reading there. is colored by the fact that I listened to the episode first. So, <laughs> I, there is that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't I don't think it's necessarily wrong that Barack might have felt that way. Like, that certainly may have been his reaction. And, and they make a good point that in that day and age, that is uncommon. Like that They may, make that point, yeah, I'm just like, like, 18 times. Yes, but, like, okay, do. sorry, just, just to read the text here because i've got it too but it's the what if you go with me i'll go if you don't i won't and then she says i will go with you but because of the way you are going about this the honor will not be yours Hmm. so i guess that comes down to translation so i was gonna say i was gonna say what's the uh what's what's our translation difference because that does sound fairly punitive is that uh verse nine so that is So, I mean, I'm using the ESV here. So, yep. it is a conjunction. It is not inherently correlative. Oh, uh, okay. It could be 
right correlated but, but it's not specifically so it's so i think that that's maybe just the difference in how odyssey is portraying it versus the way you're reading it is yes. they're probably not like they're probably going off a translation that does equate yeah. those two things more closely yes which could be fair yeah I don't know. Yeah, Interesting yeah, discussion regardless. Sure. Like I don't yeah. I, it doesn't I don't feel like it totally affects things, but I think knowing that there is a translation in which what they're doing does make more sense. Yeah. They still maybe go over the top with it. Sure. But I think that that yeah, the, it's not like they're totally off base or they're yeah. just kind of shooting yeah, yeah, from yeah, yeah, the yeah. hip. No, that's fair. I think I think it's certainly interesting that they made it as big a deal as they did i do get yeah. what you're like the, the, yes the, well, they could have the, made it a, a big deal in like a different way though. yeah like there's always the I, i'm sorry i'm gonna i'm blanking on the name of the prostitute that helped rahab rahab yeah right so you can look at it as like god used this you know, incredibly lowly, broken person to accomplish his will. Or you can see it as God chose to involve somebody who wouldn't normally be associated with his will in his will. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 And I think, I mean, I have a note here, which is why I like Deborah's comment of God's will being done with or without her mm -hmm. specifically. Yep. I mm -hmm. feel like you know, I wrote down that the primary purpose of using a woman to kill um, Sisera is is not, you know, a woman did it, but to show that God was in control and used a woman who was not a soldier, was not in the battle in any, in fact, was miles away. Right. And just, he used her instead. And it mm -hmm. wasn't, you know, yeah. the general of the army. It wasn't even a single soldier. It wasn't even someone who would be assumed to kill someone. It was just some... Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's a person. Well, and I think I think the thing that works too, stepping back from the scripture of it and just talking about the narrative of this episode, is it works very well for them to set this up up top and have your expectation be, oh, Deborah is going to be the one to kill um Cicera. 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 Like, because because right, if you're if you're going in and you know the story, you're sure. you're going to get oh that's what they're setting up. But if you're if you're listening and you don't know that, you go oh okay, so Deborah's going to be the one to kill him, and then the JL coming back around at the end thing yeah. hits even better because yeah. we've established very clearly it's going to be a woman. It's just not the woman that we're expecting. Yeah, which some classic great literary story, right? work. Right. Of yeah. The Bible. Well done. Yeah, woohoo! And I, yeah, I think I think that them hammering home that point in their narrative mm -hmm. helps to just make that land better. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we we then do a thing that I really appreciate as a device in this episode, which is we pop out of the news report like directly for Brink to have a conversation with Wit mm -hmm. about like essentially like cutting back and just from the from being in the action to be like what's the context around this yeah. and wit doesn't like show his hand as though he knows the whole story which mm -hmm. he does but instead like plays around and gives like what background he can in the moment we're in yeah no i i liked most of wit's cutouts uh there were maybe one or two that i didn't love but for the most part i mean he was he was pretty pretty spot on i mean he talked about you know the this is the third time that they've been ruled over you know by another group um i mean the fancy boy term for this kind of cycle is the diachronic cycle of judges i know <laughs> it felt like i had to you know yeah make, no, you gotta earn your title yeah i do i really Did i really gotta work OT for it too? uh if i don't i'll get kicked out of seminary um <laughs> So it's the, you know, diachronic cycle of, you know, doing evil, then they're given to their oppressors, then Yahweh raises a judge, then the judges free the people, and then the land has rest, uh, which we see all of those things in this story, in the text, and some of it we see in, um, in, the, in the audio version here. But, but that cycle, uh, what makes it 
diachronic instead of you know synchronic is that it gets worse every time it's like a whirlpool mm. so like gotcha. the period yeah, yeah. of rest decreases and the period of oppression increases every time that they keep doing this until eventually you know you have the famous you know everyone did what was right in their own eyes for there was no king in israel and then saul so yeah. Yeah, no, the book of Judges, the way that it's written in that respect is so cool because yeah. the the ending, what, the last three chapters that all end with, you know, they did so what was good. right with their own eyes. Uh, and also it's chiastic because it's uh, structured around Gideon as, like, the turning mm-hmm. point of the Judges. Um, so, like, that's where the ratio of, like, rest pivots. But this, yeah. is, this is before that. So this is when Israel is doing bad, but not as bad as they're going <laughs> yeah. to be. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is still pretty early in the, right. the, crappy, yeah. the crappy vibes. But... Before things peak and they need a king. <laughs> we are, yeah. yeah. No, we, are, we are about to get <laughs> to uh, Owen, Owen 9 Lions territory, <laughs> Israel. <laughs> Oof. Uh, <yes. laughs> um. I did like uh, Witt's sort of clarification that it wasn't slavery, but, like, oppression, Mm -hmm. which I think is a really good, like, that's a good point to make. Mm -hmm. Like, this wasn't like when they were in Egypt and were slaves to the Egyptians. This is another country has come in and plundered them and taken all of their stuff and burned their food and taken their weapons and is like oppressively lording over them right they're not slaves it's an occupation but, yeah not like an enslavement ownership yeah. yeah so i i think that was a really good like clarification and explained it in a way that was clear and yeah. understandable by a lot of people yeah and then we cut to the crux of this episode in my opinion which is which is uh brink then goes to consult connie on deborah and we get a really weird, just kind of icky. I hate yeah. every second of this. <laughs> Why is change. such a big deal? <laughs> Mama. We're done. You're done now, Connie. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's an argument. He goes to Connie as the expert on Deborah. Connie uses this as an opportunity to talk about, like, a lack of representation of women in the Bible and how she thinks that it's super cool. Is this like a normal thing Deborah's for her? Here. Is that like her bit? Or not? No. I mean, she's been historically used as like the whiny feminine, feminine right. character though. So right. like it feels very in line for her in yep. this situation to be like, why aren't there more girls in the Bible? And but then, like, right. The, the, but it's a legit the argument problem. that they treat like, oh, shut up, Connie. Right. <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is the problem is I... It's such a weird choice for the show to give voice to those issues and at the same time just shut them down left and right and make it a joke. Yep. Yeah. It didn't feel good. It's no. very sitcom-y. No, I'm like, I'm, I was like, oh, okay, Connie's going to get to, oh, oh, well, why, why, why did we do this? Yeah. Like, why... Why include it only to poo-poo it yeah. and call that a joke? Yeah. Like, Brink the- makes a decent point. Like, it is wild for that to be a thing at that time. Cool. Great. I, not a bad point. But then you, like... <laughs> oh, it's so bad. <laughs> it's just so bad. You're done, Connie. <laughs> oh, like, oh, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. It's not good. (laughs) There's no... Connie deserves better. I mean, I think that, yeah, you can spin at the other angle and mention how unique and uh, valuable it is that, you know, where women are included in the Bible is in unexpected but very powerful ways. And this is an example of that. In in two ways. Like, this Mm -hmm. is like a double kill. This is a great... This is a great example of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I, yeah, I, I, it it's just, yeah, I don't know. The whole exchange is just frustrating because it feels like... It came out in 2001? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, well, it just, it feels like... 20 years like, ago. <laughs> it feels like the writer's room has an axe to grind. Yeah. And which is like... From 20 really years does. before which 2001. Is like, right, where it's like, oh... 
we hear this objection and these comments raised all the time, let's just shut them down in a way that's not at all meaningful or insightful and yeah. just be like, oh, it's dumb that you would raise these objections. Oh, yeah. yes, and this is also for children. This is supposed right. to, like, nurture yeah. their minds. Right, and it's like, let's it's like them no. Let's nurture shutting them down. Right, yeah. exactly. No, guys, it's dumb that you would, like, have questions about the lack of women in a lot of the Bible. Yeah. Like, it's, it's such a, yeah, it's such just a, ah, it just feels so, like, bad yeah yucky it's yeah. just gross and unnecessary yeah it's like you went out of your way in a story that is chock full of strong women and has like is an interesting like interrogation of that and they're making like the discussion that we talked about earlier of like oh man a woman going into battle like that's like at this time like they are drawing attention to this being unusual and important and then but then <laughs> they don't actually and then they just but then they don't actually Connie. think it's important <laughs> yeah. they think that like yeah obviously like quiet, I, I don't know i yeah I feel like I'm not able to land the plane on my frustrations here, but just know that they're there. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I mean, the point that you made about it being completely unnecessary, I think, is what really bothered me. Like, you didn't have to have this bit with Kanye. <laughs> right. Like, this didn't right. have to be there. It's not long. It's not like you really needed, like, a ton of space for filler. Like, it right. it, it was like a, a one-minute at most conversation where it was just making Kanye look bad for asking these questions and mm. then... Brink just being like, yeah, no, we're not going to even go right. there. Well, then don't yeah, we're going to the cut you off. It's like, what were they going to Connie to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And just, I wasn't an expert. I just have a lot of opinions on the subject. Like, yeah. really, dude? Do you have to? Yeah. Yeah, it was just, yeah, it was gross writing. Yeah. In an episode that I think is otherwise very well crafted, and this just felt like, hey, we're just going to, like, take a couple shots below the belt because we can? Yeah. Because we want to and it seems right. fun. Like, yeah. This yeah. is, like, a bunch of cynical, like, fundy guys kind of got in a room and they wrote this really good episode of something and they were like, wouldn't it be kind of funny? You know, <laughs> right. What if we just... Right. We what just if this... What if, what if we... This episode feels like it's a little too woman heavy. We gotta take him down a peg. Yeah. Like, <laughs> come on now. What do you think this is? What do you think we got rights? What do you think equality? Oh, <sighs> feels bad. Uh, yeah. 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 That yep. scene. That being said, though, gets under my skin. This Bible story is really good, <laughs> and it's about to get better. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. Yep. We right. We 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 cut out then and. Uh, to Alex not being able to pr pronounce the location That's name. Nathaniel, mm -hmm. actually. Oh, is it Nathaniel yep. at this point? Mm -hmm. we, we, so we have both Alex and Nathaniel. Yes. This, this one's Nathaniel. Yeah, so Nath um, any time that's with Cicera is Nathaniel. Oh, right, of that's course. Anytime that's with the yeah. Israelites, yep. it's yep. With, Alex. With Alex and Con or, uh, Mandy's with, with JL. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good, good catch there. Thanks for keeping me in check. What can I say? I, I'm an Adventures and Odyssey expert. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love that little inclusion of him sounding like a kid reading a Bible passage at Sunday school yeah. in the middle of this like very well produced news report. Mm -hmm. It just it it tickled me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you, I, I want you guys to try and say it. Oh, I don't even I, if I had it written down in front of me. I here wait. Oh, buddy, I have it. What what verse is this? Um, gosh, I've got the, what's the got verse? the passage open. Uh, that would be. Is it four or five? Uh, it's actually 13. Judges 13? No. Oh, sorry. Four verse 13. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. This is uh, Hirosheth Goyhem? Is that what is that the word we're trying to pronounce? Yep. Is yeah. that what he stumbles over? Yes. How, how, how did I do there? Well, I want Andrew to do it first. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to go Hirosheth Hagoyim. Uh, I mean, it weren't terrible. It was Cherishet Haguyim. Okay. So, okay. That that sounds about exactly as wrong as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Were, I mean, you had the second one basically right. right. It's just the ch for the huh at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And the t for the, the t th. for the th. Yeah. yeah. All right. 
but cool. But yeah, I just I find it. Yes, I find no, it, that I does found it feel like endearing. A, that feels like a Sunday. Like I, mm-hmm. oh, I've we've been all there. been there. <laughs> <laughs> we've all been in Sunday school class, and you're asked to read some Old Testament thing or someone's name in the New Testament. And you're like. The and then the, went to and you just kind of right or you get into one of those like great passages where it's just like a list of places people who conquered the Israelites or that oh, they conquered. No. <laughs> it feels so bad. It's rough. It's my favorite um, favorite chapters in Bible study <laughs> when you just have to listen to some poor soul rattle off all the historical names. Yeah, yeah. So we we have uh, General Sisera uh, going. Um, saying that he has to annihilate the Hebrew pests. Mm. Mm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, yeah. I yeah. Is there anything? I I my notes are pretty sparse. So if you guys feel like you've got stuff, you gotta like you want to insert here. But I think this is basically just setting up the character of General Cicero. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, they set him up. I mean, they add, th- again, like, they add some things here. Like, they don't talk about how many troops he has in the Bible. Uh, I mean, they talk about his amounts of chariots, but they don't talk about, you know, knives or swords on the edges. Again, not that they weren't there. I didn't do a ton of research into, you know... You the... didn't go into the academic uh, <sighs> studies of... I've... I also have school, so I didn't go into yeah, Canaanite yeah. chariot uh, <laughs> history construction. <laughs> Um, I would imagine that that would make sense, that there would be knives there. It feels right. But, um, <laughs> it's, it's a, it's, yeah. the, the point is that their combat is chariot heavy. Yes. Mm-hmm. It, which, yes, that is the whole bit in the Bible. The right. Chariots, mm-hmm. that's the thing. Hey, he's, got, he's got chariots, and that's... He right, wants them on the out. flat ground, because yep. chariot. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, and then we, what, we, we jump back to wit. Mm-hmm. I don't have any notes from that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he just, I just wanted to say, good job, Wit. You made a good point that when you look at the numbers, right, like 900 chariots versus mm-hmm. 10,000 people can seem like, dude, 10,000 people? Like, that doesn't even matter. We got it. But no, no. 900 chariots. is a lot of chariots. Even if they don't have daggers on the sides, man, 900 chariots is going to mess them up in a way that. Think about 900 horses. Think yeah. about nine hundred horses just run them over. Run I mean, and people. for what it's worth, those over. chariots might be two horse chariots. Yeah, and they Fair. could hold two to five people, depending on the size. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. Plus, yeah. I mean, it talks about he also has other grounds. So, like it just—it's not even close. Right. Like if if the and the point of this that I made is like without without God's help, like mm-hmm. there is. There is not even a chance. Like, this right. is... Well, they were coming... The whole point is that they, they're on the top of the mountain, they're safe up there, and then they end up coming down. Yeah. <laughs> which <That's> death. <laughs> which isn't discussed scripturally, but is a good point that we can understand through cultural context, which mm-hmm. they actually did a good job in that sense of pulling out that context of, like, being up on the hill was actually really good for them. Mm-hmm. And right. so the fact that Deborah's telling him, go down the hill into the valley, right. which... As an adult reader who has, you know, commentaries and things like that, like we would go and seek to understand and, you know, would come to that conclusion. But right. this does a really good job of, yeah, you know, filling in those gaps for the kids. So right. it's not like, well, why does it matter that she told him to go down the mountain? Right, it's right, like, right. Cause, yeah, because we, we set this up here so, so that sister, when, when Deborah says like, all right, we're going to head down the mountain you mm-hmm. understand as a child listening oh israel is losing their only advantage right now yeah. like mm-hmm. they were already set up to lose and this was like and now they just like got their knees cut out from under them yeah mm-hmm. not literally by chariots with wheels but figuratively by what god commanded yeah or exactly. what deborah communicated yeah no absolutely i think that was a really good that was an not an addition, but a, a clarity piece that was added right. that I think did a really good job of actually conveying some sort right. of additional meaning rather than right. just adding a line of something for the sake of adding a yeah. line. Yeah, well, it's mm-hmm. the kind of scriptural interpretation you would hear from a pulpit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's that like, you know, hey, we just read through this passage. Let's like establish a couple things that would build this out Mm -hmm. to get you a clearer picture of what's going on and what the significance is here. And I think that's part of why I appreciated this more than something like Bernard and Joe, because there's, there's an additional level of commentary here by wit that Mm. pulls us out and explains in some ways where, 
you know, textual interpretations differ or contextual pieces that may not actually be there, but he's like giving this clarity and it doesn't sound like, you know, he's reading the Bible. Like it's, mm-hmm. hey, this is this is how we understand this or this is how Christian culture has come to interpret these things. And I feel like yeah. that's been, that was a much more palatable and enjoyable way mm-hmm. of right. kind of interpreting. Right, this. well, it's, it's a way of going hey, here's a bunch of people acting this out. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about what that's based on. Yeah, which which I, I liked and I think lended a lot of, of goodness to it. Well, and it shows the, the kind of collective, you know, hive mind that goes into scholarly, um, you know, biblical research and everything and the way that we understand the Bible now mm-hmm. is different um, comparatively. Whereas like when you have a Bernard and Job and there's just kind of your one guy saying it and when they do make it sound like it's uh, scriptural or poetic or something yeah those those lines definitely get fuzzier um and i think it's just a, a you know a result of a single so- storyteller as opposed to you know a mock news coverage mm-hmm. with yeah experts and people on site and yeah. such yeah. well and that and that continues in this next scene which is that um they do head down the mountain and rain starts pouring Mm -hmm. and so we lose contact with nathaniel Mm -hmm. and the and alex is like you know canaanites are running in circles their chariots don't work in the heavy rain and then we hear them like go into the river and get swept away Mm -hmm. and throughout all of that we we then cut out and it's like it's like now from the bible we don't actually know that there is a rainstorm Mm -hmm. we just know that they like got washed away in the river and this is like maybe a way that we could read that and i yeah it just goes into the thing that we were talking about of hey what if we do what if we are a little bit more figurative or loose with our interpretation but then we do ground it somehow Mm -hmm. yeah I didn't like that part as much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna say this is gonna be straying too far for and or for uh, for Drew, I assume. But. Yeah, I, I never felt... too far to stray for Andrew. <laughs> so, so there's the there's two about bits it. about this, right? There's so there's the first piece where it pulls out to Wit and he talks about the storm, right? And he says that you know uh, the clarity that the Bible gives us is that there is some something happens. God goes before Israel, and then they're all murdered. Um, and then, but he portrays it to weather. And then later it pulls out that he, uh, so it pulls out a second time. Then after you watch everyone run into the river and he says, yeah, so because it rained so much, you know, the river swept them away. So that's kind of why we, we think that, but I feel like this is a little bit of poor exegetical work personally. Yeah. Um, because if you look at the the rest of of chapter five which is where he he quotes pulling the bit about being swept up by the river okay uh and then that's also it mentions earlier in the chapter things about rain not but the problem is it doesn't relate to uh this specific story the the washing away by the river does but the rain doesn't um it's just it talks about you know history and how they've seen god do things before and then it goes into the story of Barack and Deborah in their song. And then later in the chapter, uh, verse 21, uh, it talks about the Kishon River sweeping them away. But we have to remember that chapter 5 is the prayer or the song of Barack and Deborah. Right. So it's, I mean, it's poetry. Like, there sure. are a lot of things in there that clearly don't line up with what happened in the you know the actual story like there are other pieces mm-hmm. in there that also don't align because sure. they're poetic yeah and i think at least when i read through the passage right it feels super clear it feels clear enough maybe i shouldn't say super clear it feels clear to me that they run down and then everyone's killed by the sword and then they run away to you know their little home base and then they kill everyone else there with the sword like that's it clarifies that they are killed by the sword and then it feels like, you know, because the battle happened by the Kishon, it feels, you know, like that's their poetic sort of piece mm. that ties in there. And I mean, I get, you know, it is a kid's show. So I get maybe not wanting to say that everyone was murdered and cut apart. But, you yeah, know, I, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so it does, there are specifics about how 
like about how the army was eliminated because that's uh, the thing that i wasn't clear on in my like cursory glancing through the actual passage so judges 5 verse 20 says from heaven the stars fought from their courses they fought against sisera and that's right about that was these, right that's yeah. the more poetic thing drew was talking about i was talking about yeah, like in chapter four about the Kishan swiping them away but yep. in chapter four if we go to verse 15 um, the lord routed sisera and all his chariots and all his army before barak by the edge of the sword and Sisera got down from his chariot and fled away on foot. And Barak pursued the chariots and the army to Cherishet Hagoyim. And all the army of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword. Not a man was left. Okay. So, I mean, it's so, not like... Right. And he went there and beheaded every single one of them. No, but, but, it, but it, it definitely paints a more hand-to-hand. And for what it's worth, we do get through both Alex and Nathaniel's coverage some of the hand-to-hand yes, fighting definitely like we get definitely. them running down we get them it's maybe it's maybe them going a little bit further leaning into the poetic than they needed yeah. to but i feel like we do get the portrayal of both the army it's not like they you know it's not like they don't fight at all yeah and god just intervenes with rain it's like you know they they set up a scenario in which the by by putting in the rain element of like this is why the chariots are ineffective yeah no i i don't think that it was completely off base or a, a terrible choice or how dare they do that right i don't know if they needed to yeah is, is more my my qual like I don't know. I tend to err on the side of if we don't have to add something, then we shouldn't. Like, scripture's sure. good enough on its own. Like, yeah. not that, I mean, I enjoyed this episode. I really yeah, did. Yeah. This oh, was know, way better than the other ones that I listened yeah, to. Yeah, but it's just, but, it's, it's interesting to interrogate stuff like this because I, right, I tend to land on more of, well, because I, I think also because I approach adventures in odyssey in general from such of a storytelling perspective yeah and i'm like i understand why the logistics of the episode a really good way to portray this is we're like we're bringing in the rain we're you know they're fighting them we hear plenty of sounds of combat and um we get uh who is it? Oh, it's, I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Alex, like, talking about, like, all the violence and how mm-hmm. gruesome it is and, mm-hmm. like, you know, having but a bit of... But also how cool it is. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. He is but... very excited about the, the, the way the Israelites <laughs> are winning this fight, yeah. but grossed out by, like, the way it looks. Yeah. And so I can appreciate, like, I can appreciate why the show goes this route and i appreciate that it does it's not just shooting from the hip it is basing it on something but it's a loose interpretation because this is a verse in the chapter is them beating Mm -hmm. them and it has to be a bigger point of the episode yeah yeah like it would be it would be tough for it to just be you know, Alex and Nathaniel going like, oh, yeah, they won the combat that they shouldn't have. Like, we just watched, like, the Israelites just completely overwhelm and destroy them. And I feel like that, just because of how you would have to do that then, does not... I think some of the beauty of having it of the rain is that we get to see it as, like as the power of God and his intervention. Whereas I feel like, I feel like it's hard if you're doing a news report to be like, Hey, all the Israelites are slaughtering the other guys, but that's not like, that's not by their own power. Yeah. I feel like Mm. it does give a literary advantage to be able to make it, to give it a little bit more of a supernatural spin, mm-hmm. even if that, and yeah, that might, that's not the truest interpretation of the text. And I don't think it, at least for me, I'm like, I like, 
I think it works and is an okay liberty to take. But I can understand, yeah, I can understand being frustrated by it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I, yeah, I don't know. I guess my my response to that would be like if you, if it isn't a clear, you know, like if you feel like that's not a good enough news story, right, or not <laughs> able to be portrayed well as a news story, then pick another one. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, fair. I mean, I fair. yeah, like I get it, what you're saying. You make a good point that like it does make this clearer as a audio medium for children conveyance of the story in this way right like i think the root of god gave the canaanites over to the army of israel at this battle is portrayed clearly in scripture and in this interpretation yes like i think that fundamental high level what is the point here yeah is is clear in both but i understand that it's not a direct literal interpretation and i appreciate that wit acknowledges that and is like hey like that was cool and whatnot but like for what it's worth that's not all there like having yeah. that pull out then I think gives them an even more liberty to make that call in the writer's room yeah. because they get to go. We're also going to acknowledge that this is not. This is an adaptation. Yeah. This is, we're not like. Right. Which is interesting and cool that they would do that. And, it, and within the spectrum of Odyssey, like it does distinguish it from something like a room of consequences, an imagination station or something like that. Like. Kids radio is a separate thing because there are actors, you know, real life kids playing the actors as opposed to like a computer program. Right. Yeah. I I, I struggle with uh, the issue when it comes to Bible verses of explaining them to children when there are nuances that are incredibly, well, nuanced. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when there are nuances that are nuances. Yeah. When, when the nuance do nuance things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> In, in situations like this where it's like, okay, so you're going to have, like, as a kid, I was very excited about the stories of violence and war in the Bible and everything. And, like, that's super fun to play pretend as and everything. Like, you know, the fact that they make this. Go to your local Christian bookstore, buy the suit of armor and sword that is all labeled as the mm. armor of God so mm. we can sell it. Oh, yeah. Mm. Lifeway. Love it. Mm. Not problematic at all. See, I grew up on Providence. I'm old. You uh, are old. Well, <laughs> I didn't even go to Lifeway. I was poor. <laughs> <laughs> I was poor. Yeah. But the knockoff brand from Walmart. Ooh, and then yeah. sharpied on it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Green Drew, you, dragon you, plastic swords. You said you had a comment to make about Alex's excitement over the violence. I think it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. So, let me temper this as an adult, not, well, yeah, an adult male who was a young boy. As a kid, I probably would have been like, heck yeah, (laughs) this is sick. Yep. As an adult who's thinking about kids listening to this, I am not as enthused. Certainly. (laughs) And I think what really kind of frustrated me about this is then how they treated jl killing Mm. sisera at the end Mm -hmm. like i felt like it was such a terrible like where are you drawing the line here Mm -hmm. because like on one hand you're totally cool with alex standing on a mountain watching people get literally slaughtered like gutted with a sword thousands of people thousands (laughs) of people getting killed right and saying quote wish you could see this guys it's disgusting but really amazing too like yeah this is yeah well it's it's the it's the star wars thing though which is we have no issue with like clone wars especially which is more ge- geared towards children was like oh we can have our heroes take down people in battle but we cannot have them kill someone one on one which is what this is doing which is saying like if these people are going to be heroic in our eyes like it has to like we're we're not allowing it to be like 
in cold blood. It's got to be like in the middle of a battle and then it's fine. Yeah. Which a whole big can of worms <laughs> yeah. for sure. Not, yeah. not, not trying to open that, but just saying sure. like, I, I think you don't have that a definitive is, answer, Dylan. <laughs> I think that is why that is, I think that's what they're deploying here. Yeah. I think it is, I think it is bad. Like, I don't, I don't like it. There is one that is glued in my mind from an episode of Adventures in Odyssey. I think it's an it's an Imagination Station adventure, and someone is going back to see David and Goliath, and like the child who is seeing this in that episode for that child as like a visual thing, like they are living in that story, and it is. It's this girl, and when David cuts off the head of Goliath, she, like, turns to camera, and it is just, like, it, they make, like, somewhat visceral noise in the episode, and she, like, noticeably, like, freaks out. It's like, that is so gross, and, like, turns away. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that stuff is tough. Yeah. And I don't... It's hard to... It's hard to get around, but the... Yeah, the enthusiasm of the child in this instance of Alex is tough. Yeah, and I think I think maybe we'll do that one someday. Yeah. <laughs> I think my disappointment, confusion, frustration—I don't know what it, what the word is for how I'm feeling about it—is is this almost double standard of like, oh, well, we want to protect the kids from this violence. And uh, Mandy, when, you know, yep. JL, you know, puts a stake through Cicero's head and you hear the ping and a scream. Right. Mm-hmm. Is like, let's just say she's good with a hammer and pegs. And then like five seconds later is like, I don't want to talk about it. We'll have them read it in judges with their parents. Like, Make up your mind. Like, mm -hmm. are you going to tell us what happened or not? Are you going to allude to it so clearly that I feel like a two-year-old could get this? Or are you not? Like, mm -hmm. just... <laughs> yeah. I I kind of... I, I like the way it lands as subtext in that later scene. I, I just appreciate the device of that. Of, like, we're really setting up early on her stake skills. <laughs> and then, like, Mandy leaves the tent. We hear it in the background and it's yeah yeah i think I, for me that lands yeah well and i mean she talks about going to get the steak and right. hammer mm -hmm. so i yep. mean it, it yeah 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 but i think right i think yeah it, to what degree are kids able to perceive of this yeah i don't know who knows kid. yeah i just i don't know i, I felt really weird about the whole violent well, yeah, like, so it seems to be that there's a double standard within the episode of what makes this violence okay and yeah. the glory like the glory of of violence in within the story um you know it in the beginning it's established that like this is what god wants and but then when we see these kids that are witnessing it get excited by it and as the listener who you know relates with the kids you're just excited about it because it's portrayed as violence like it's exciting because it's violence, not exciting because God is working his revolution on Earth and it looks like upending, you know, a, uh, yeah, a civilization, like a, a, you know, a massive power. Right. I, there is, so in the official guide, uh, Nathan Hubler writing here talks about some of the the violence and whatnot um so this is his words this episode caused considerable debate among the team members we argued over how much of the notorious tent peg scene should be heard by the audience the violent moment was heard but we made it sound very far away yeah i mean it was quieter and further away but <laughs> Yeah, it, yeah. Wanna, it's, no, it I get it. I get like it. a writer's it room compromise, though. <laughs> right. We got a yeah. break for lunch. What if we just make it far away? <laughs> just make it quieter. Just take the level down like three gigs. Yeah. yeah. No, it is for sure tough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah. Oh, oh. So the before we actually get to the tent peg thing, though, we, um, yeah, we talk about. 
General Cicero running away, mm-hmm. and then we jump to Mandy, mm-hmm. yes. who is talking to JL. And the moment in which General Cicero runs into this scene is so good. Mm-hmm. Like, they really... They really nailed this episode structurally, which is like yes. General Cicero has. So we started on, JL. on, on JL and Mandy. Blink brain, we, not Link Wayne, right? Different, different. Brink Chetley. Brink Chetley <laughs> interrupts the broadcast. Then we cut. Then things wrap up. The Israelites win this battle, but we don't know where General Cicero is. They're like, okay, you know, we're going to continue a manhunt for him. We can return to our normal coverage. We go back to Mandy and JL, and General Cicero runs into the scene. Yeah. The one thing that they don't handle well, though, is this is a rarity in which audio went for the stereo mix. I yes, don't know if you I guys didn't were like listening that. with headphones. I did not like it that. Is a, it's a bad stereo mix, guys. Yeah. They put Cicera entirely in the right ear. I thought yeah. my headphones came disconnected from yes. my computer for it a was, second. I literally it, had to double like, check. He has like, long isn't... periods of dialogue, and rather than putting him on the right side where you would do loud in the right ear, quiet in the left ear, they just go all right ear, and it doesn't work. Yeah, the problem was I had my headphones with my right thing, like my right ear cup off. So like, I had listened like, to it what? in the car earlier, yep. and then I was listening to it again for the second or third time, like yep. writing notes. And I'm like, wait, he's supposed to be talking. And I hear like mumbles from like the cup. behind the, my ear with the ear cup against my head and was like, oh, okay, well. Yep, they just did a bad mix. Yeah. That's cool. Every once in a while, they break out the stereo, and I always find it funny when and why. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is like an interesting <laughs> decision. <laughs> yeah, they've had people in different locations so, compared to the reporters before and stuff, right. but for this yeah. reason, apparently, they felt like let's yeah. just go full tilt to the right. Right, full full tilt to the right, right to establish that he is outside of the tent, much like while Mandy and family. JL are inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you. That was good. Uh, it was really high true. quality. True. Yeah. Setting that one up. <laughs> You're welcome. I did like so. So this was another variation on the scripture piece here, which I think can lend some some interesting note. You know, like scripturally, right? JL calls him inside and like invites him from like going by and says, "Hey, come mm-hmm. in. You look tired. Take a rest. Whatever." Right. Whereas in this one, Cicero comes up and asks for. Um, you know, rest and whatever, which yeah. I understand why they did that in terms of storytelling from the sense that Mandy and... Right, you want the surprise of Cicero yes, showing up. I but, get that. Yeah. But at the same time, there's a certain level of intentionality in right. JL just... Bing, that no, is a little bit is, missed in this. That is fair. I think that they're, yeah, they're definitely struggling with how to cover this portion of the story, which yeah. is... Really the crux of it. Yep. Yeah. But <laughs> once again, maybe not the episode they needed to, to do. Sure. Also, incredibly, this episode, the initial title and all of the questions kind of, you know, reference this. But the initial title of the episode was OT Action News colon Barack. And I'm like, it's not his story. <laughs> Not even a little bit. No. And the discussion Mm -hmm. questions are all like, why was Barack afraid to go into battle? Is that okay? Can you think of any ways that you're like Barack? And I'm like, are we once again just erasing that this is a woman-driven story? Well, and that's, I mean, even the outro. Well, it's because the women are used to teach the men the lesson. Yeah. Well, and I mean, that's the... That's the whole bit in the outro, too. Like, yeah. the whole thing is that Barak lacked confidence and God used him. And it's like, well, I mean, kind of. But I mean, the bit was that he <laughs> didn't have to use him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, also I note, is it that... right or wrong to be afraid? <laughs> is... <laughs> You're not allowed. You lacked confidence. You uh, absolute well, child. It's, it's, it was a feeling. <laughs> it's like... It's like, is it right or wrong to be tired? Uh, I don't know. Why? Yeah. I will note that the, the death scream was not a Wilhelm scream, so they probably had to pay extra for that. So that. They, they do a lot of their own Foley work. Oh, man. I was, I was looking forward to the classic Wilhelm scream, scream but yeah. it's fine. 
Uh, so, they, they so yeah, took they, they McCusker do... around back with a tent peg. <laughs> they do really <laughs> lean into the. <laughs> so, they really lean into the text of of uh, of her giving him milk. Yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. What was with the milk? I don't... It's in the Bible. I'm I know it's it in the right Bible, here. but I'm saying like they really like made that a big thing in the story of like he's like, "Can I have some water?" She's like, "I got milk for you," and he's like, "Oh." Milk. <laughs> oh my gosh uh, i love milk yep. I'm like dude what she, is your glitch she covers him up with pillows <laughs> yep it's so Quickly, funny get yeah these it, pillows. it just works for me and, and then, then bing. all right and then oh the interesting yeah the interesting thing that like we jump back outside to to barack now with alex mm-hmm. right alex is the one with barack yes mm-hmm. okay yes and he He's been, um, yeah, he's been hunting for him, but he establishes that, like, they can't go into the tents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and because... it's their duty to, pro- like, it's the host's duty to protect whoever yeah. seeks refuge with them. That's, like, the law of the land. Mm-hmm. Right. So Common they... law of the land. Which, yeah, just cool context for them to set up and establish and Social whatnot. Social norms. And... Love to see it. Helps yep. to make the Bible story make sense. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then, uh, and then Mandy walks out, or, like, um jail kicks mandy out of the tent Mm -hmm. and um and uh yeah alex stumbles into her and like he's like hey what's going on she's like oh you know he's uh, we we found cicero he's in the tent over there with jail then like we hear the tent bag and she's like you know was (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's not gonna be a pleasant meeting yeah (laughs) i'm sorry exactly also i know why they cut i mean i'm agree that you know talking about putting a 10 peg in someone's head probably isn't great for kids yeah um but i would like to note for the older people that are listening do it uh yeah it talks about how she put the 10 peg in him uh and she went softly to him and drove the peg into his temple until it went down and into the ground while he was lying fast asleep from weariness period so he died period (laughs) just (laughs) mm. Let me just yeah. take this, line it up with your temple. Hey, guys, if you're going to do this at home, temple temple to the ground. Yes. Yep. All the way. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So he died. Yep. This is before we knew how sensitive brains were, so we just really like... <laughs> we were like, huh, there's a soft spot there. Let's just all the way through. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> pin him to the ground so at least he can't... Oh, if it takes man. a couple swings, it doesn't matter. Just make yeah. sure but it, it goes all the way But it didn't for her, no. Andrew, because... She knew her way around a hammer and some pegs. So. How about the follow through? Just man, straight, about the follow look, I know, I know, we've skull. talked about stuff we like and don't like, but man, I am just smiling talking about this episode now. Yeah. Like, I, I love, I love the conclusion it brings. I mm-hmm. think that, I think that 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 the like off screen, um, in an audio medium, but like the off screen killing of Cicero works very well, mm-hmm. and I think it's funny when Mandy's like, "Hey guys, we're not going to go into details here, but if you want to read it, go to judges." <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, and then we go out on a little bit more of Whip just being like, "Yeah, we don't actually know why JL decided to kill Cicero. That's not in the text. Yeah, we can you know we can take our guesses or whatever, but like yeah." Yeah, oh, I just love a good Paul Herlinger wit. I do. I love I love Paul Herlinger's wit. I love any time that we are like that the, anything is willing to acknowledge. Like, hey, we just we don't know. This is what we like, think. Yeah, but this yeah. is what we know. Yeah. And I liked. I also liked. Yeah, I liked wit throughout this whole bit. I I appreciated his commentary mm-hmm. throughout the whole thing. I feel like sometimes I don't like Witten. I feel like he's a villain. But in this yes, case, I liked Witten. He is. <laughs> um, Occasional, especially recently. So so in this one, I like Wit. Uh, and I like liking Wit. It makes me feel good inside. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also liked his bit at the end where he's like the whole... Like it doesn't... We don't know why she killed Cicero. We don't. But that doesn't really matter for this story. The because... point was not why she killed Sisera. The point was by doing that, she fulfilled God's prophecy. Yep. And that, that ultimately is the point. Like the point right. isn't she killed him because she was, you know, married to a Kenite and she liked the Israelites that what like, right. who knows? The yeah. point is she killed him and that right. fulfilled the prophecy of God. Yep. And it didn't take Barack. It didn't take Deborah. It didn't take a soldier. Right. It didn't, didn't take, take an anyone. Israelite. Yep. Mm-hmm. Didn't... Like we didn't need one of God's yep. chosen people. His will is going to get done regardless. Yes. 
and I, I, I really in the Old Testament even yeah so. I really appreciated the way that he laid that out clearly um and, and in a way that was just super straightforward and yeah I just I like that yeah this this is the image of the woman I believe that is that Deborah is that supposed that would to be, be Deborah, Deborah? <laughs> probably yeah, yeah I think so I would have to imagine because I don't there's no tent peg yeah um, <laughs> but there it, it appears to be a slumped man in the background you make a good point I don't you know I don't know um maybe that's... the wiki lists that as as jail uh-huh. where's the tent peg you <laughs> liar <laughs> unless their tent pegs are made of swords <laughs> 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 the they just could use be wrong. swords as their tent pegs. Um, <laughs> That's yeah. why the Israelites kept losing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they bent their swords in half. <laughs> oh, man. One last thing I just want to bring up, just a stray observation slash note from, from the guide, whatever. They don't make it super clear, but uh, apparently Rodney was supposed to be in this episode, and he just wasn't, the actor just wasn't available. Steve Burns couldn't be found that day. Um, I think as... I think the Nathaniel Graham bits were supposed to be Rodney, but I'm not entirely sure. Regardless, that would not have made any sense to have, like, the town bully as one of the, the people reporters? who's reporting <laughs> in this episode. So, thank you, Steve Burns, for just being like, ah, oh, actually, guys, I'm calling out sick today. Uh, sorry. It's gonna have to be someone else. My bad. <laughs> God's will is accomplished. Uh-huh. <laughs> With or without Mr. Burns. With or without Mr. Burns. <laughs> Good. Beautiful. All right. Um, any closing thoughts, closing thoughts Mr. I didn't Huber? like the takeaways that they gave at the end. <laughs> yeah. oh, but I mean, yeah. we talked about that briefly. We did. Um, you can you can hit him again here. Yeah, it just felt like this wasn't about Barack. And they kind of tried to make it about him. And, yeah. like, I think Wit did such a good job with the closing piece. He did yep. so... He brought it home yeah. so good. With, like, the whole point wasn't why she killed him. It was that she killed him and that she didn't need to be Barack or an Israelite. It it was a woman. A woman. In that day and age, a woman. (laughs) And then they went back on it all and was like, this story's about Barack and God using him even though he didn't have confidence. It's like, no, it wasn't the point. You even know it wasn't the point because you (laughs) said it wasn't the point. Yeah. The, the, there is from time to time and this is it a weird dissonance between the chris wrap-up and the episodes like mm-hmm. internal wrap-up especially yeah. when it comes to kids radio stuff because yeah. they do have both because it is a show within a show yeah yeah it i mean i li- i liked this episode i enjoyed it i would listen to it again even without kids, because it was a it was a good time. It's very uh, the sound engineering great. Yes, mm-hmm. it like, was superb. All the battle, everything. With aside from that weird stereo, like it yes. does really put you in the place. Yeah, I think the rain and the mud are mm-hmm. well set up. Mm-hmm. Like it, well, it hiding it under makes the cherry sounds yeah. cool. low to the yep. ground. Like yeah. I don't know how they did that part, yep. but yeah. you feel like you're there. Yeah. It, it was really good and like when he was up in the tree like you could hear the mm. leaves more clearly and then when he was under the chariot you just heard thump 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 with the rain against the yep. it was really good i really appreciated the episode from a creative standpoint even from the storytelling standpoint i think they did a a above average job of conveying the story in a way that is clear and and gives you know accurate information and gets the point across but just i mean it wouldn't be you know, an, an Adventures and Odyssey episode unless they, like, screwed up some of the takeaways or something. Sure. Like, I feel like right. that, something yeah, has yeah. to... They can't fully land the plane on one yeah. of these. It feels... We were pretty close. It's about as close as we're probably going to get. Yeah. But, no, I really liked it, all things considered. Drew, I don't know how many episodes you have left on your contract, but uh, OT Action News Jephthah's Vow is one that I would think that we would laugh a lot covering. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't... I, was I supposed to have a contract? Am I getting paid for this? Arthur is. <laughs> That's true. Right. We're, we're paying one of our guests, I guess. Maybe we should pay another. Are you serious? Or well, no. I mean, you. Oh. Everybody gets an <laughs> equal me, share like, in know. a worthless company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like I should get the most share. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. So, Obviously, yes. it's it's proportional as, to episode as a company that is 
still in the red. Still um, actively <laughs> losing money. <laughs> like, we still put more money into the AIO club than we make through merch. Oof. So until that changes, you're not getting anything. <laughs> But we'd love your merch. No, but no, we'd no. love to have you come back for another OT action news yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I mean, we're we're flexible I, here. I love but. being here. Mm. Mm. I like mm, you too, buddy. You. All right. So so th- this is this is your form of payment. Plugs, Drew. <laughs> I I do actually have something to plug this time. In the past, <gasps> I've. I plugged. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't tell Andrew about. You got that. a spit take from Andrew <laughs> over there. We're not just. You're not just gonna plug. Other episodes of this show or other episodes of Andrew's show? Exactly. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll plug those too. So I've been on this three other times. So if you you like this, but maybe want me to be a bit more salty, then the other three episodes are probably for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I've also been on the Andrew Sabo podcast. <laughs> What Twice? even is that anymore? I don't know, man. I don't even know. If that, does that still exist? I haven't made one out? since before COVID. Cool. No, uh, that right, at right. The, right at the dawn of COVID. Yes, yes, right Wait. at the dawn. No, 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 that's not true. We did our two-parter true, breaking true. down my playlists true. after that. That was, yes, okay. because you <laughs> made me. <laughs> I said, Andrew, this doesn't work on the WADFAM trackpad, but I need to talk about it in a podcast. Bring yours back. Anyways. Uh, anyways, uh, I am starting a new podcast with one of my seminary friends called Second Rate Seminarians. Ooh. Uh, so that's at... 2nd seminarians on twitter uh the first episode might be up by the time that this comes out this will be out in like two weeks yeah if it's not out by then it'll be out very shortly afterwards okay. yeah we'll, we'll link. um so yeah it's gonna be me and a buddy talking about uh, at least in the first episode kind of our stories how we ended up where we are uh but from there it's going to be us talking about you know all sorts of things hopefully I have some guests on from people of different sort of religious backgrounds and just talk about how they got where they are, um, discussions between the two of us about modern things in Christianity, about being in seminary, all sorts of good stuff as it pertains to being a second-rate seminarian, because we're not that great. Um, I mean, there you go, guys. If ever there was a show for you to listen to, if you like Drew's episodes, it sounds like you can get a lot more of this over there. Yes, absolutely. All right. Um, so with all that being said, it's been a pleasure podcasting with both of you gentlemen. Thank you. It's been a pleasure with both of you. It's been and, a pleasure. And Andrew and I will be back in another week with another guest. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. What Fam Shock Pod is a presentation of the Lidditz Podcast Co-op. This show is a fan podcast and has no official affiliation with Adventures in Odyssey or Focus on the Family. As such, the copyright is ours under Creative Commons. Follow the podcast at WadFamShockPod on Twitter and Instagram, or email us at WadFamShockPod at gmail.com. Battle at the Keyshawn was hosted by Dylan Weaver and Andrew Sabo, with special guest Drew Huber. It was edited by Dylan Weaver. And I'm Nathan Haverstick, hoping you'll join us again next time for more of the Wadfam Shockpod.